What's going on, everybody? My name is Keaton. I am the one who started this channel, the Institute of Men. This had originally started as a podcast, which I still run, called The Man I Want to Be, which was dedicated to helping men of all ages, but mostly young men, figure out what kind of man they want to be. It was a question my father asked me when I was 23 years old. I was living in his basement, feeling sorry for myself, wishing I had, <laughs> wishing I had a girlfriend and didn't. And you know how it is when you're 23. And he asked me a question. He said, son, what kind of man do you want to be? And I was like, I don't know. I don't know. And he said, I would figure out what kind of man you want to be. And I would pursue that vision relentlessly for the rest of your life. And that, that moment right there, that changed my life. And a couple of years ago, during a time of prayer and fasting, I felt the Lord say to me, communicate to and build men. That was it. It was during a fast, and the, those were the only words I got, communicate to and build men. And I didn't know what to do. So I actually started a, a small group, a men's small group at our church. And it was later in the year that I decided, hey, I'm, you know what? I'm going to do a podcast, and I'm going to do it with pops, and I'm going to share some stuff that I've learned over the many years that I've been trying to figure out who I want to be, like in my character. Not hype, not, not, ooh, I'm not, not that. That's not me. I'm, I was only trying to figure out my character and who was I going to be, what kind of, how are my kids going to remember me? How are they going to describe me when I wasn't around or when they're adults? What were my kids going to say about me when I'm an adult? And so I start this podcast and do it for a couple of years and I'm still doing it and it's been awesome. But then earlier this year, during another time of prayer and fasting, I had a moment with the Lord where I felt, I felt very, very strongly reading Nehemiah, the book of Nehemiah, chapter one, I felt a burden for the men of the church. You know, in Nehemiah chapter one, he's a cupbearer and he he gets a report of what's going on in Israel and that the wall has been turned broken down and the gates are on fire. And in that moment, I felt the Lord speak to me and say, that's the status of men in our church. And before we go forward, I just want to say that's because an enemy has done this. An enemy has taken out the wall of the church. And I believe that men and fathers, men and fathers are the wall of the church. They protect what is most precious to God, which is his church. And so I, I, you know, I got this holy burden for like, we've got to rebuild the walls around the church. We've got to rebuild men. And so the Institute was birthed in my heart as it, and I had this cool little caption. I, you know, this, that's not really me. I'm kind of goofy, kind of weird, kind of nerdy, but I came up with something that would help me formulate what is the purpose of this particular channel, this community. And it's the Institute exists to build men Build, strengthen, and inform all Christian men, all Christian men, no matter the denomination, whether you're Catholic, whether you're Protestant, whether you're Orthodox, and some of you, you may not even know those terms, but no matter where, what denomination or what practice, if you're a Christian man, if you're baptized into Christ, if you're a follower of Jesus, this channel exists to build, strengthen, and inform all Christian men who go on to build God's church, strengthen their marriages, inform their kids in God's way. And those three things are very, very key. They're very important to the future of our society, the future of our civilization, the future of our church. The world right now is trying to form your children. And if you're single and you're like, I don't have kids. Well, okay. Not yet. Not yet. You will someday. And the world's trying to form your kids after what they think is most important. And they, they'll come for your kids. That's more evident than it has ever been than right now. And it is the job of fathers, hear me, the job of fathers to form their kids in the ways of God. That is in Deuteronomy chapter six. It's Deuteronomy chapter eight. It is, it is essential that fathers as the head of their household are the ones who form their children. You cannot punt and let your wife take care of it. You can't punt and let the school take care of it. You can't punt and let the daycare take care of it. That's your job first and foremost. So we got, we got to form our kids. I'm going backwards through these, strengthen our marriages. A couple of reasons to strengthen your marriage. Well, one, I mean, come on. If your marriage is good, everything else is good. Your kids are going to see your marriage and that's going to, that's going to stabilize. That's going to tell them what is their future going to be like, depending on your state of your marriage. You will only rise to the level of the strength of your marriage. If your marriage is weak, you will either abandon your family or you will stay hindered as a man. Uh, it says in Proverbs that the wife is the crown of her husband. So you will never be a king without your wife. She'll make you a king. You know, metaphorically, you're not actually going to be a king, but metaphorically, you, you'll be a king. 
which means the number your number one priority in the world is strengthening the marriage bond with your wife because in Christ you're one she's with you you guys are one person now so you need to take care of that bond and strengthen that bond in order to for your posterity for your own sanity for wherever God wants to call you you know all of those things you got to strengthen the marriage plus marriage is an is a proclamation of Jesus it's a proclamation of Christ you know that's Ephesians 5 when you are brought together this the mystery of marriage is the proclamation of Christ and between his church and him and so attack on marriage is actually an attack on Christ whether that is through redefinition or through I mean, even like annihilation of a marriage people don't get married anymore at all they're unwilling to make a covenant or commitment or they're putting off marriage really late in life now i got married late in life uh you know well, later i wasn't 22 or 23 i was 28 when i got married almost 29 so i'm one of those people who put it off for a little bit through uh my own choices uh and it was probably good i my pops told me at 23 that i couldn't bring a woman into my life because i'd be selfish and he was right you got to form your kids, strengthen your marriage, but that starts with you. It starts with you and it starts with me. Um, we, we, the, we, if you're not married, you will be one day. If you are married, you're the head of your household, which means all the responsibility falls on you. The spiritual covering of your house falls on you. That's your, that's your responsibility. The discipline of your children that falls on you. You're the head that yeah, you and your wife, you're one, you're working, but you're the head. God gave you that responsibility and he gave me that responsibility. And I'm not like an expert at all, but I know at least what my responsibility is and I want to grow in it. Now, and I neglect my responsibility more often than I'm happy to admit, <laughs> really. I, my wife is there to like drag me along, you know. We've got, but it starts with us. And it starts with like, what is our going to be our devotion to God? What are you going to build your life on that's going to actually strengthen your character and affect your children and your marriage and the church? Like, how well do you know the scripture? How well do you know church tradition? How well do you know the history and your, of your heritage? What do, you, do you know what you believe? Do you know how to pray? I didn't when I was 23. I didn't know any of those things. And I made a commitment. Like, I'm going to... If I'm going to take care of my wife in the future, I wasn't married for, I took five extra years. If I'm going to form my kids, I'm going to pass all this stuff on. I got to, I got to make sure I'm the one who knows God. So I'm not formally educated in the Christian faith, but I've read a lot and studied a lot. And, and I'm, I've been a pastor and I've learned the scripture. I've like learned, learned, learned. I've taken a lot of online classes. I don't have a degree, but I've taken a lot of online classes. I've sat under good instruction. I'm not going to have poor instruction. If it's not, if it wasn't true for Christians in the first century, the second century, fifth century, 10th century, if it's not true throughout history, it's not true for me. I'm a confessional Christian that way. But I want to take what I've learned in it and give it and hand it off to you. And that's what this community is for. This is a community where we together, we can be, uh, be built up. We can be strong. We can learn to grow in the faith because the Christian faith is exciting. And it's time for men to take their stand and protect what has been entrusted to them. That is what was given to Paul writes to Timothy, guard the good deposit entrusted to you, to you, not to your wife alone, not to the schools, not to your pastor, your youth minister, you. The future of the church belongs to the fathers that stand up, like I promise you. And this channel is dedicated to strengthening men, building men who strengthen their marriages and form their children. That's what this channel is for. So thank you for following. I asked for you, uh, that you would consider contributing financially. So if you contribute financially, it's $6. It's only $6. Um, I'm, I'm not going to get paid. Obviously, if I had a thousand subscribers, that's $6,000 a month. I'm that's going to go to the channel. It's going to go to the work. Maybe I'd get paid, but I'm probably not. That's a lot of subscribers. I won't, I'm, the goal is on the channel is 500. If you're, if you subscribe, uh, you get to participate in the conversation. You don't just have to follow the content. You can actually participate. You can comment, you can upload stuff. You can participate in the community. And it's only $6 and that goes to further the mission because we can't do this alone. I always joke that if I'm Nehemiah, um, especially in my younger years and even now, uh, if, if God came to me and talked to me like Nehemiah, I would for sure try to rebuild that entire wall by myself without enlisting a team of other people to do their part. It's too exhausting. 
You can't possibly do it by yourself. I can't do it. You can't do it until we need each other. So the goal is 500 men. If you would subscribe, if you, that contributes to the mission, it helps support the podcast. It helps support this channel, helps support YouTube. It helps support any of the other content and uh, products that I'm, I'm willing to sell that will help us become godly men, godly men who are built up in the faith, strong marriages, informing our children. So please consider subscribing. Thank you for at least following and tuning into this channel. I hope God blesses you and I will talk to you soon.